have you ever gone to bed at night and kind of laid there and thought about stuff like is the garage door open or did I start the dishwasher or is Tom Brady going to retire ever? Why in the world do people get pineapple on pizza? Why is there a cat in the house? Do we even own a cat? Why does my wife like Diet Mountain Dew so much? Anyway, that happened to me the other night. Actually, it happens to me every night, but on this particular night, I was watching back my video on the old Cutlass that was parked for 30 years. And while we were making that video, it actually fired once. And I thought, hmm. So if I bought a few more parts and tried to fire this old 81 Braum up, I wouldn't really be losing anything because I could use the parts for the other two cars. So here I am. I went and spent a little more money. I still think it might be a lost cause, but we're going to do that. But first, I'm going to clean it up.
came up here a couple of nights ago and pressure washed this engine off too to try to get some of the nesting materials out. So I think what I'm gonna do is take off the cap and the rotor. I bought an ignition module for this because that's a pretty common failure. And you can see just how bad just nesting materials built up around this thing. That's one of the reasons I gave up that night. But um, it's just one of those things where I'm just curious. I just gotta know, I just gotta know. And then I'll have extra parts for my other cutlasses. They're the same parts as it turns out. So maybe I can do this while setting this car on fire. The wiring harness to the HEI distributor. The important part seems to be intact, the 12 volt supply. I'm gonna take this cap off and see what it looks like inside. All right, we got the cap and rotor yanked off of here and it's really not all that bad, but I kind of don't trust it because it was so crusty taken off. The little um, terminals in there should be cleaned off. But I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, that's the ignition module right there. I've got a new one of those. I'm gonna replace that, put the new cap and rotor on it, put a battery in it, put some uh, true fuel down in there, the synthetic fuel, and see if I can't get it to turn over a few times or run for a few minutes or whatever. And I think that's gonna be good enough. I just don't trust this car to try to drive it anywhere, but at least I'll have a little, a little bit of a victory. All right, just a little side note about tools here. This is one of those six-in-one screwdrivers. So there's, on each end of this style here, this is a Husky from Home Depot. You've got, well, it's just got the wrong bit in it. Normally it has a large flat and a large Phillips, and then this end of it, the barrel, will be um, 5 16 And on the other end, it'll have a small Phillips and a small flat. And then the end of this barrel, will be quarter inch. When you're working on a car, you've got a nice multi screwdriver with two different size Phillips, two different size flats, and two nut drivers that are pretty common on a lot of cars. Hose clamps, um, things like that, usually have 5 16 or eight millimeter um, screws that hold them down or tighten them up. So these come in pretty handy without making lots of trips to your toolbox. Let's take a moment to talk about how hot Florida can get. We had a few nice days, but you can already feel that miserable subtropical humidity coming back. Now we can flop the coil back in, which goes like this. There went another tool falling. Story of my life. Now I gotta walk all the way back around and get the screwdriver and the screws. I think we'll be okay. Maybe. The spring's a little tighter than I thought. Down in there. Oh my gosh. We got the cap and ignition module and rotor and new spark plug wires. That's about as far as I'm gonna take this thing. We're gonna pour a bunch of that true fuel right down there. I took the battery terminal out of the truly dually right there, hooked the battery back up. So I'm gonna throw some uh, gas to it or some starting fluid maybe and um, see if we can't get this thing to roar to life until it blows up. Okay, you guys watch for an explosion.
pull the plug part two this thing is definitely not gonna run it definitely has a compression problem and probably an ignition problem as well but I'm not gonna waste any more time on it this doesn't sound that great it doesn't respond too well with things that I do am I too close to the camera now I was all right but I am gonna check the power accessories and see what kind of salvage parts we have here I'm aiming the camera at the engine like you can see it, but it's on selfie mode. That's what I meant to do. Let me go put my short curly figure in here. We got no horn. I know about the lights. I know the wipers aren't gonna work because the wiring harness is toast. Oh wait, I gotta turn the key on. I don't know if the clock works. How about the radio? I don't hear nothing. Power seat works. Door locks don't work. I know the other day this window started to move, but I'm a little bit hesitant to do any of that. So this is absolutely 100% a parts car. The header is really good on the front, but I'm gonna quit messing with trying to get this thing run. It's just turned into a complete waste of time. I am gonna yank my new parts back off probably wrap this video up it did clean up all right I needed to clean it up so I could kind of see a little bit more detail of what's going on here and as it turns out not much I think I'll take this though wrong and I'll keep that so I'm gonna take the battery out wrap this up um, I appreciate you guys watching the short one this week. And this will be the last that you see of this car. So if anybody has any questions, you can leave me a comment down below. Subscribe to the channel would be great. Next time, right. tune in again. Thanks for watching. Yep.